All right, so let's talk about fingering problems and how to avoid them at the piano. Um, there are right and wrong ways of uh, approaching fingering, all right? But for the most part, it is very personal to every individual. But let's go through some of the do not do's, all right? One thing you do not do is you do not cross over a finger over a finger. So these are my fingers, this is my thumb. I'm going to refer to it as fingers and thumb, okay? So fingers, thumb. Four fingers, one thumb. Don't cross over finger over finger. Now, if you're an advanced player, yes, you know that you can actually do something like that, going from pinky up to the fourth finger, all right? But I'm talking to uh, more beginning players, all right? For the most part, you do not uh, cross over finger over finger. The only time that you would cross over finger over finger is if you're on a pinky on a white note and you're going up to a black note. Then you can go from your pinky up to your fourth finger, all right? But what I'll end up seeing is I'll end up seeing stuff like this. You know, see that kind of stuff? Always be aware. When you see that kind of fingering, you know that there's something not right there, all right? That's very unpianistic. And what ends up happening? It ends up breaking up the line. So what you want to do is you cross thumb under fingers. So thumb always goes under the finger. The right hand, all right, it's always going to go to the right. Left hand, thumb is always going to go to the left. Or you cross fingers over the thumb. In the right hand, the fingers will cross over the left of the thumb. In the right, I'm sorry, in the right hand, the fingers cross over the left. In the left hand, the fingers cross over to the right of the thumb. So <clears throat> fingers over the thumb or thumb under the fingers. Typically, you want to avoid getting to your pinky and then trying to uh, cross underneath with your thumb. That is a very difficult thing to do, and more likely, you're going to end up messing up the line all right, or breaking the flow of the rhythm. That is really all, what it's all about. Um, if I have a sentence that I'm, that I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to go with my friend to the movies. Okay? Now, that sounds fine if I have it all flowing, but if I say I'm going to go with my friend to the movies, it sounds weird when I break up the flow of that line. All right? you, we hear it all the time, you know, people do it, and then, you know, it, they'll be like, I'm sure I do it as well, the ah, uh, ah, uh, and buts, and whatnot, and it sounds odd that the flow of that line has been broken up. So what we want, for the most part, is to have a nice flowing line most of the time. The way to achieve that is by thinking about your fingering and practicing uh, these concepts of fingering. So, usually... Uh, fourth finger, middle finger, or second finger, we would cross under with the thumb. So if we end up getting, so here I'm doing my F major scale. Once we get to my, my fourth finger, boom, I cross under the thumb. I wouldn't wait until I get to my pinky. Even though I can do it, it's not, uh, it's not very fluid, and it's uh, uh, very much, um, well, let's see, how can I put it? Uh, let's see, this is one of these times where I'm pausing. Uh, um, you have much more of a likelihood of making a mistake and breaking up the flow of that line if you wait until your if you wait until your pinky. So when improvising, let's say that I'm just taking you know once again that G7. I'm just going to play a basic G7 chord down here, and let's just say I'm going to use my I'm going to do some improvisation. Don't worry about what it is that I'm that I'm doing improvisation wise. What we're all what we're just going to focus on is just fingering. So here we go. So now I'm going to go down. I hit my middle finger. I want to get up to that B up there, all right? I want to get up to this B. So you see what I did? I crossed underneath so I could get up to that B. So I had to be thinking, hey, I want to get up to that B, all right? So how am I going to get there? If I'm right here and I'm on my pinky, well, I got to do something, so I got to get my thumb over there. One thing to pay attention to is this whole five finger concept at the piano. Basically, what ends up happening is when you move your, your uh, hand, now if I take my middle finger, I, I see here I'm now in, in a new five-finger position. It's actually a whole way of teaching, is by teaching by five-finger position. Eh, I don't particularly uh, subscribe to it, but you know it is another method, right? But the main thing that's really nice about the five-finger method is that you start to see these five-finger patterns. You start to see that, hey, look, I'm in this five-finger pattern. When I play my C major scale, 
Well, guess what? Right here, I'm in this five finger pattern. But then when I cross under and I put my thumb on F, guess what? Now I'm in a different five finger pattern and then guess what? All the notes of that C major scale line up nicely. When I cross over, my middle finger, there I am. I'm in a different five finger pattern. Okay? So now, when you're improvising and you're doing something like, you know, I'm trying to get up to that B up there. Okay, well now I need to get my thumb underneath there, and by getting my thumb underneath there, then I'm easily right there at that B with my middle finger or second finger or whatnot. Now, the with fingering, it's almost uh, that there's the do not do list is greater than the do list. All right, and what I mean by that is you end up finding problems with your fingering okay, as, as you go along and as you're working with it, but there's really no set way of fingering a jazz piano improvisation. All right? It's all over the map and it takes time and it takes you like really just realizing, it, oh hey look, this is where I'm trying to go to. It's always beneficial to think about your destination. Where am I trying to get to? If I'm trying to get up to that note and I'm on a G minor 7 chord, okay, see how I've had a cross many times underneath? Once again, don't worry about the notes, all right? The main thing is see how I'm crossing. I'm not just going, or, or you know what, a better example. Let's say I want to get up to this note up here. I'm not just going, like that, all right, I might go, see how I have crossed several times there. Cross, let's say that I crossed right here. I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm not, not going to cross over a finger uh, uh, like that. That's, that's not going to be right. I'm definitely not going to do this. That whole lift and move to that next note, that just breaks up the line completely. So I need to think ahead of time that, oh, hey, I'm going to want to get up to that A, so I cross under at some point. Do I cross under my second finger? Do I cross under my third finger? Do I cross under the fourth? It's completely up to you. Now, it always helps, I, I find it helpful, to always think about, hey, if I could have two notes up here, or two fingers up here, or two fingers down here when I'm improvising, then that's good. So if I'm on this note, I got, you know, if I'm on my D here, I got a couple of fingers up here that I can still do something with. So I can, okay, and I got a couple of fingers down here. Now let me cross underneath. Right, so now I'm on my pinky, so I know I got to be coming down. But I want to go back up, so I just cross underneath again. Right? So by understanding how that works, the cross underneath or the cross overs, right, it makes it easier for you to start to think ahead about your fingering. Right? So anyway, that's it on fingering. I'll see you in the next chapter. We're going to start uh, talking about um, uh, how to break down your practice routine for improvisation. So see you in a minute.